despite being mostly forgotten, the Kodiak F1 is quite an iconic car. It was built by a man named Mladen Mitrovic, a Serbian-German car engineer, who owned a company specialized on turning cars into convertibles. But his long dream was to build his own supercar, and like a number of other tuners of the time, he took inspiration from the Mercedes C111. And in a short time, Mladen, with the help of the University of Munich, managed to build his dream car. The engine of choice was a 5.7 liter Chevy V8, which, like many supercars of the time, was mounted into a ZF 5 speed gearbox. Originally, the price was less than $50,000, but by the time that the car was ready for production, the price had doubled, and this basically killed the project since this was a 4959 territory, and those cars had at least 100 more horsepower. Orca is one of the wildest looking supercars. It was first introduced in 2003, so probably its creator got lots of inspiration from the GT1 cars of the late 90s. The car was created by a Liechtenstein man named Rene Beck. His idea was to create a car that would rival such cars as the Carrera GT, Enzo, Zonda and Koenigsegg, so it was basically hypercar territory. The first prototype that was presented at the 2003 Geneva Motor Show actually was powered by a Volvo T5 engine. Thankfully, the engine was later replaced by an Audi 4.2 V8 from the S6. The numbers weren't bad at all. This was mostly achieved thanks to the weight of the car since it weighed at only 850 kilos. The price was something around 300,000 euros. Orca built a total of 7 cars, all were prototypes. Looks like in the late 80s and early 90s everyone was trying to build a supercar, and this was also the case for Spice, a German company known for manufacturing industrial electric transformers. But in 1992, they decided to build their own supercar. The car had 500 horsepower from a twin turbo 5.7 liter V8 and had a top speed of 350 km per hour and a 0 to 100 and in 4 seconds. But the thing that stands out the most on this car is without a doubt the design. I don't know, but this is probably one of the cutest cars of all time. While all the previous cars were V8 monsters, this is not the case for the Isis Ammo 1, since the car had a turbocharged 2 liter Subaru engine, which came from the WRX STI. Not much is known about the Isis, besides the fact that it was basically a race car for the road, since it was based on a New Zealand race car called Secker. Czech Republic is known for Skoda and Tatra, but there have been a number of Czechoslovakians who have tried to make it into the supercar market. The Inotec Mistero wasn't the most groundbreaking supercar, but was a quite a big achievement for a car built in house by a no name car maker. Like many newcomers into the supercar world, the Inotec had a Corvette V8 engine which was mostly left untouched. The car featured a tubular space frame, which allowed the creators of the car to design a body on the, of their own, and also to mount the engine behind the rear seats. Every once in a while we see different brands coming from the dead. Sometimes they work, but 99% of the time they don't. And this was also the case for the Trident Icheni. Trident was a typical British sport car maker from the 60s, which made some nice looking sport cars. But in the mid 2000s, a group of investors decided to bring back this forgotten brand. The design, I would say, was quite zagato ish, especially with a double bubble roof. But the main thing about this car was the engine, since uh, it was aiming for the first diesel supercar. Trident used a 6.6 liter diesel Duramax V8 from General Motors. 
Trident claimed an acceleration time of 3.6 seconds and a top speed of 320 km per hour. Trident also claimed a range of 3200 km, around 2000 miles, and a fuel economy of 30 km per liter, around 70 miles per gallon. But these numbers were never proven. It's unknown what happened with this project since their website is still up and looks like has been recently updated. So guys, thank you for watching and see you next time.